hello everybody welcome to my channel thank you so much for tuning in if you're new here welcome i really appreciate your joining i want to appreciate your love on my first video in a while the, the previous video just before this uh, i've gotten your ma mails your dms your comments i really really appreciate you thank you for the love thank you for sharing you are the best so this is a series right this is a waiting series i shared on my instagram page as a day of recording this um on the 6th of june how that the holy spirit has placed a demand on this to make it like a sort of a series i'm thinking it's going to be a short series just talking about things that have to do with waiting i'm hoping to bring a couple of my close friends on board to share how they have been handling my waiting because <laughs> i mean i shared with a couple of my close friends my husband is definitely going to be part of those that are going to speak so you want to stick around and just watch and learn even if you have not waited before or you are not in that um phase i'm sure you'll learn it thing or two and i believe that at some point in our lives we always have one or two things that we are waiting on god for. we'll be talking about some things that you should not say to a friend of yours that is waiting number one my favorite have you tried ivf when are you gonna try surrogacy have you tried which other thing have i ever heard iui have you considered adoption guys trust me i have <laughs> and i don't need your reminder and that's the truth i don't feel like anybody especially and this is especially to those who we don't have that closeness or we, we, we were never on that pedestal and very funny enough i think that it's people that have actually been through this that are the most insensitive about it from my experience i believe that or from what i've experienced i've seen that it's people that actually have have waited you know before and now have their bundle of joy that somehow more or less forget how they were or want to rush you into a decision they took after they had gone through a journey and i don't think it makes sense you can be there if you are close enough to the person who is currently waiting on god or if you are their friend they will confide in you I i've confided in a couple of, um, of my friends you know we've run through the options we've looked at it you know um and i think that it's it's a test if you cannot call this person on phone if you cannot uh, uh um um text this person it shows that you are not in that pedestal very simple so keep your opinions to yourself and if you it really 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 is bubbling up in your inside pray about it tell god that god give this person the i just feel like this person can consider ivf or this person can consider adoption so let this person try i know that your intentions are pure at least for the most part of course there are some of you that but you are not my concern but i'm considering the the person that is going through it because you never know when is a great time you never know what that is going to trigger because i know that sometimes when I am asked these questions that's when I, it actually occurs to me that oh i'm waiting so that's why you don't really want to just double into that and just number two when are you having babies i've gotten this question from tribers i've gotten this question from acquaintances from family members i don't talk to <laughs> when are you having babies uh whenever i want to what's as in why why like why do you want to have that conversation with now if you are her mom i get that like you are mom but i'm talking to those that you don't even you're not on that pedestal because if you were on that pedestal you would know that your friend is waiting and if she's not or if they are not waiting and they want to have their child whenever they want to have their child i think it's still up to them it's not up to you i think that many times we we claim ownership into the lives of people who put their life out there or some parts of their life trust me no matter how open a person is there are some things the person wants to keep private it's not up to you learn to shh about it and i feel like a lot of times we don't pray we don't pray for people we don't pray about people because if you pray if you really pray there's a certain rest you would have that even when you see the person it will be joy you would exude from the place of rest you don't even have to it, you'll be so safe you'll be such a safe haven that is the person that will be confiding in you in fact you would almost say ah don't worry don't worry i'm praying about it you know number three has your husband gotten tested because you know that most times it's not just the woman 
is the man. Hey, God. <laughs> why, why do you think that they don't know that? In 2023, especially when you're dealing with educated people and all of that, do you think, do you really think that they didn't consider that? Sometimes the husbands, most times, the husbands have a different journey. And the, the person who is waiting, the woman usually carries from experience. The woman is the one that carries more of the burden. She's probably trying to balance it with her husband. Now you have come to sow seed. It is not necessary. It's not necessary. Have you tried NSPPD or NLP? I just believe if you join NSPPD or NLP, I mean, God will answer you like this. There was this woman, please, 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 please. Even Pastor Bolaji Idowu and Pastor Jerry Eze, they didn't send you this thing that you're doing. They didn't send you. They didn't, I know they didn't send you. I'm sure it shocked me. You that are joining, you know that there's, there's, you can intercede for them there. Leave them alone. Ah, you will not join NLP now. Oh. Ah. You see, other people, the people that have many children, say they are joining NLP. It's you that you not join an SPPD. What is your concern? Everybody has their, they are joining. This thing I'm telling you, I've talk, talk, I'm not speaking myths. I'm speaking things that have been, I've told, have been told me. Why, why? What is your concern? What? <laughs> what is your issue? They, everybody has their journeys with, with God, with God. Not, not with you. This journey that I'm on, I can't even advise any other person to, oh, have you shared on YouTube? I can't do it. I can't. It, when my baby comes, I can't say, oh, because I shared on YouTube. I cannot because it is not a method. Because sometimes we marry method and we forget the God that we are supposed to be serving. And I feel like that's one of the reasons God would have me talk about it. Because the method that worked for you doesn't necessarily have to work for the other person. And you don't have to load it. The person doesn't have to fail there before you leave the person alone. She can sense that it's not going to work for her. She can sense some, for some people, IVF is not their journey. They know, they know that this is their capacity. They are aware. You, you're not the one that will come and convince them. They're adults. Funny thing is, the people that are on that pedestal in my life, they've not done it. As far as they've not even whispered it. It has not come out of their mouth. It's the people that I don't even know their name. That all I know is their handle. Or, the, or people that I don't talk with. Or people that didn't share it with me when they were going through it. Are the ones that, that suddenly have opinions. I'm not offended. I'm just helping other people, honestly. Because great peace of them that love thy word. Nothing shall offend them. And I, I can tell you for free. Since I grasp this rest. I sunk my teeth in it. Nothing can offend me. So let me just say nothing, absolutely nothing can offend me anymore, especially when it comes to this journey, because I've gotten to that place of rest. But for ladies that, for women that are still struggling on their journeys, you want to consider, it's not about this thing that you want to say. You're, you shouldn't be your own priority because you're not on the receiving end. What are your in-laws saying? What are your in-laws saying? <laughs> Do you want to go and beg them? Do you want to go and appeal on behalf of this lady? Eh? Because you see, in-laws, eh? because you see, when it was my own turn, ha, my mother-in-law, she showed me, they start sharing woes, stories of woes. Please stop doing it. Stop doing it. There's this other one that is not really saying, but is doing, and I've noticed it a lot. I go for family gatherings, and people are looking at my tummy. I, I, my mom is probably going to hear this for the first time because I don't tell her because I just smile. I can feel people looking at my tummy. There's an auntie that actually came to hug me and I could feel her pressing on my tummy. Ma, ma, you will know. It's not you should know me. I'm going to rock it. You will know. You don't have to praise on my tummy. You don't have to do these things. Why do we, what, what, because sometimes you know, it's from a good place. It's from a good place. How is this thing a good place? <laughs> how you are pressing my tummy you are hugging me to yourself i can sense it i can sense it i can sense that that's what you want you want to know i can sense that you want to know and then there was one she looked at my tummy looked at my tummy and she just mm -hmm. i saw it i actually saw it and then 
another one when a friend is confiding in you about maybe all of these things i've shared don't say it's just in your head and i love my best friend for that shout out to you janet she will carry it on her head who is better said this she's not serious <laughs> It's me that will be begging that he's okay. She did not know. Ah, my best friend said, no, no, no. Because you see, things like that. So, ah. Don't offend my best friend. <laughs> what are some of the things you can say? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. But you can pray. Because the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. So pray for me. Pray for anybody around you. If you are really, really peeved by this thing, pray for them. That's what you can do. You can intercede. You can take it up. I remember a couple of my friends who were wasting. I wasn't some one. I wasn't even married. Yeah, I wasn't even married. I started praying for Lala. I was praying for her. She didn't know. I received word for her. I prayed that the word would come to pass. When I saw that the circumstance has started i held on to i said god you told me that if this will happen then this will happen okay it has happened now oh yeah that month she got pregnant still today she doesn't know i didn't tell her and we're really close you don't have to i know people that are praying for me when i see them i know my brother iori there was a day um i i was i was anchoring a, a program and i came on if you saw he didn't tell me but if you saw my brother's face it was like he had held god that month i actually there are times i'm praying to god and i say god there are people that are petitioning you on my matter <laughs> i know i can feel it so let both of us be free they don't tell me but i can sense it a spiritual person knows when you are praying you don't have to put it on their face you don't have to do that you don't have to make them feel uncomfortable there's nothing the innocence has caused some people to 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 lose their happiness to lose their joy to lose the little strength so you can't claim i'm innocent i didn't know i didn't know now you know don't say it to them again don't say it to them don't say anything just keep praying and when you see them love on them even try and and take their mind off it when they are talking to you about if they are talking to you about it be their strength Keep your advice to yourself unless you are asked. Keep your advice to yourself unless you are Let me say it again. Keep your advice to yourself unless you are asked. Have sex eh, three, three days before ovulation or during ovulation, three days after. You need to keep having sex. You see, you just need to hold God. You just need to, please, please, please. You don't have to. You don't have to say that. Leave it. And let me put this out, this as I round off, guys. I am not in a place where I'm not holding God. I'm not in a place where I'm not steadfast. I'm not in a place where I'm not, I'm not in all those places, right? I am fine. The reason I can share this is because to a very large extent, the Holy Spirit has done such a work in me that I don't have to have had it before I can feel at rest about it. Hey, thank you so much for watching guys. God bless you. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Um, if you've had any experiences that you want to share, like maybe some of the things that were said to you that you really wish nobody did, maybe during your waiting period, you can put it there. We're all learning. We're all growing in Christ. And I really will say this as I finally, finally close. As, as believers, we should only say what the Holy Spirit has given us permission to say. Don't just speak out of your emotion, out of fear, or out of worry. Speak the word. Speak life always. And that includes to your friends who are in waiting. My name is Zulu Asam Oladakwa. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. And listen to me, guys. Promise me you will share. God bless you. Have a blessed week.